In this video, I want to talk about how we can use method of moments to help us with generating estimators for the case of linear regression. So the example here, which we're going to be talking about within our population, is the case where we have a population model, yi is equal to alpha plus beta times xi plus some error epsilon i. And the idea here is that our epsilon i are going to be themselves normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared. So these two statements taken together actually generate our sort of population model. So we've got a linear regression or linear bivariate regression model with normally distributed errors. When we think about this population model, we can start to think about its population moment conditions. And we need to think about what we actually mean by that in this particular case. Well, one of the moment conditions which is apparent is that if we were to look at the errors, the errors themselves being normally distributed with a mean of zero, this should mean that the expectation of epsilon i in this case is just equal to zero. And how does that help us? Well, what we can actually do is we can rearrange this first expression here for epsilon i, and then that tells us that the expected value of yi minus alpha minus beta times xi is itself going to be equal to zero. These two statements are equivalent. Okay, so that's our first population moment condition. What about our second? Well, the way in which we define the errors here is that they're just governed by a normal process, and by virtue of the fact that we've written this second statement, we are saying that they are independent of the value of xi. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the expected value of epsilon i times xi should also be equal to zero because of this independence of epsilon i with xi. So again, what we can do is we can reformulate this using the parameters alpha and beta, and that tells us then that the expected value of, in this case, yi minus alpha minus beta times xi, all times xi, should itself be equal to zero. Okay, so that's our second moment condition. We've got our first moment condition which is here, we've got a second moment condition which is here, but we've got three parameters which we need to estimate. So we need three population moment conditions at least. So we need a third one. And the third one here, seeing as that the first two here don't actually have sigma squared in them, should involve sigma squared if it is sigma squared that we want to estimate as well. And that's easy enough because we know that the variance of epsilon i which in this case is the same thing as the expected value of epsilon i squared because of the fact that the expected value of epsilon i is equal to zero. This means that the expected value of epsilon i squared in this case should just be equal to sigma squared. And I'm not going to actually rearrange this third moment condition to involve alpha and beta because as it turns out when we formulate our sample equivalent it makes just as much sense to keep it as it is. Okay, so now let's look in our sample and let's generate the sample analogues to each of these population moment conditions. If we look at this first moment condition, we obtain in our sample a sample estimator, which is just all we need to do is just replace this expectation by the sample mean. So then we just get that one over n times the sum from i equals one to n of yi minus alpha minus beta xi is equal to zero. So that's our first sort of sample analog of a population condition. Then if we look at this second moment condition here, we are just gonna replace the expectation again just by the sample mean. So then we just get that one over n times the sum from i equals one to n of, I'm actually gonna put the xi out front, xi times yi minus alpha minus beta xi is equal to zero. And of course, because we're choosing alpha and beta and they're not necessarily the population values, we're gonna put a hat over each of these values to emphasize the fact that we are actually choosing alpha hat and beta hat such that this is actually true. Then if we look at this third and sort of final population moment condition as I've listed it here, we would then get that one over n times the sum of, well, we need to think what is our sort of epsilon i in our sample well, that's easy enough. I mean, epsilon i, if you sort of think about the equivalent in our sample, which I'm gonna call epsilon i hat, is just the difference between yi and our sort of predicted value of y, which is given by alpha hat plus beta hat xi, 
So then we just get the epsilon i, which another word for this is our residuals, are just the difference between our sort of true value of y and our estimated value of y. Because I'm just taking away here, this is just my sort of estimated value of y, which I'm going to call here y hat. Hence, we just get that 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of our estimated residuals squared is going to be our estimator for sigma hat squared in this particular case, or our estimator rather for sigma squared, which I'm calling sigma hat squared. And we see in this sort of third moment condition here, we know that this is a consistent estimator, but again, we see that this is actually a, a biased estimator. In fact, to make it an unbiased estimator, I would need to replace this 1 over n by a 1 over n minus 2 in this case. Furthermore, what do we notice? Well, we notice that actually this sort of first moment condition and this second one are exactly the same first order conditions that we would actually obtain via sort of ordinary least squares. So what do we see here? We see that ordinary least squares is actually a type of a method of moments estimator when we're talking about our error being normally distributed. Furthermore, we also know in the case of when our error is normally distributed, the maximum likelihood is also the same as OLS. And hence, maximum likelihood is also the same as method of moments in the case of having a normally distributed error for linear regression.